yeah. Does anyone have any particular questions? More questions? Well, I wanted to ask a question about that. Well, you mentioned that you lost your cousin when he was 18. Um, um, your cousin when he was 18, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there, was, there was one in one of the other poems about uh, your grandma. Yeah. Well, you remember me when I gone. So how do you define that as a, as a, as a poet? How do I like how, how do you define death? How do I define death? Yes. Because uh, well, in my country, poets are uh, all poems basically all about like deep layers of life and stuff. So yeah. and I was wondering what do you think about that? Oh yeah. We are. There's that. There's that. There's that expression, isn't there? That that you know, you you only die when the last person you know no longer utters your name, right? And you're also your your words that you leave behind. Yeah, your words and the influence that you have. So, you know, one of the things is that you know, not only am I writing about my my history like what i observe that that that's that's my legacy so you know one day i won't be around and so but will my work still be uh, have an effect um yes um but and the thing is you never know you never know what words that you say will have a an impact on somebody's life. You have no idea. So, for instance, when I was at when I was at college, um, there was this boy, yeah, you know, when he was 16, 17, called Kerry Wilson. I wrote a poem about him in, in, in my first collection. And he was skinny and he had blonde hair and glasses, and he'd come in and I, you know, sometimes see him our class, we were in different subjects, so you know, sometimes some some do. And we'd play chess at the alcove. And then, you know, say, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's all right. And then the weeks, sometimes weeks he'd go and I wouldn't see him. And then um, then I'd see him, and then I wouldn't see him. Then I hadn't seen him for ages. I said to somebody, anybody heard to Uncle Kerry? Kerry's dead. All right. I'm like, what? Turns out he had cystic fibrosis. Never told me, didn't tell me about it. And uh, I went to his funeral. His um, his mum said to me that I was his best friend, right? Because we played chess, and I just treated him like everybody else, right? So, and at that time they didn't have the advances he has now. So, like he would have known that, you know, you know he wasn't going to be, he wasn't going to make it past twenty one. But he was doing A levels anyway, you know. So, me just playing chess with him. Just going, hey, all right, how's it going? Playing chess had a profound effect on his on on him. So much so that you know, when I at his funeral, his mum's going like, oh, I've always wanted to meet you. You you, you know, you were his best friend. So you know, that's one of the reasons why I wrote writing the words that I do because I have no idea what word, what sentence, what line could have an impact on somebody's life. Also, remember, as I said earlier. I've been a careers advisor for years and years and years. So that all ties into it. I don't know what word, what sentence, what action can, can have an effect on somebody so I could change the change the world. I don't know. But I do know that the words are down in a book, in books, people hear them, and after I'm gone, it's still about. That's really interesting because that's sort of threaded through that. Plastic is better than metal yeah, yeah. poem, isn't it? Yeah. I was sort of reading, thinking, when is the punchline coming? Yeah. But partly that phrase, but also then the effect at the end yeah. when those young people are being left behind, yeah, and yeah, yeah. there has been an impact that yeah, yeah. But you, there you hasn't know, been the shouting. All, all that the way through, you, you know, 
you know, it's such a phrase, you know, we don't, we like you because, you know, mm. we're not doing the stuff that we normally yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. How does it go when your wife talks like, sometimes come to you and just, like, you look around, just, like, you try to write the what, what used to happen is that I get, I get a snippet of an idea and I'll scribble it down because I was in a job or whatever. Now I look at a piece of paper later and I go like, what did I write? No idea why I scribbled. <laughs> um, but these days I'll get an idea, my snippet of an idea and I'll send it a message to myself. Um, and then you collect it all together and like sometimes you've got something. Um, but what normally happens now is that I get I get a feeling and it's like, oh, stuff's coming out, yeah. stuff's coming out. And before, when I was you know working in other jobs, I have to suppress it. You know, and it might not come back or come out in a different form. It's not as good as like that initial. But now it's like because you know writing is what I do, I can indulge it because I know when it comes along, you know, it's a wave. And it goes up and you ride that wave and you've got to get, you have, you have, you have everything lined up. You've got to have your pens lined up. You've got to get all your info lined up. You've got to get it down because that feeling is, a, is unique to that particular period of time. And then you, you're on that wave and when it comes down, it's going down. And you, no matter what you do, you can't, you can't extend it because when it's done, it's done. And you'll look, I'll look back at the work and I'll go like, who wrote that? I have absolutely no idea because that particular headspace, I'm not there anymore. That's why I was doing two o'clock last night. So, <laughs> um, and like, so some of these collections, uh, like, so the collection yeah. have been for two weeks. But like at the end of it, I'm knackered, but I'm looking at that and going like, but then it's like, and it's just hats on. And then it's just like, okay, move things around and like, you know, you know, if you've got a, 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 a table with three legs, you know, a table with three legs. If you had a fourth leg, it'd be a proper table. Because at the end of the two, at the end of the period, that when you put at the end of that way, you look at what you've got and go like, oh right, it's a table. I was I was going for a table there. It's nearly a table. All it's missing is with, with a leg, and it's done. But you know that way when you get it, you feel it. It's just like nothing you can do about it. You just go go like it's here, and now I have the luxury, and I call it luxury because for many years. Before I did the course, etc., like I get these feelings like oh, to push it down. Um, but now it's case like okay, I feel it. Like I remember um, I was doing string theory, the one about male mental health. Um, I went to see I went to see a comedian at the Ark, and he was talking in the encore. He was talking about his breakup with. Well, the whole show was about his breakup with his with his uh, partner, and she she's also a comedian, so she did a show and it was all about him, and he did a show. It was all about her, even though they didn't mention each other's names. And his encore, he went on and on and on. It started off funny, but he went more more than he got into it. It sounded like a it sounded like a breakdown. It really did. I'm just going like, it's not funny. This is not funny. And then I left that. And then the next day, I could, I could feel it. I could feel, I could feel the wave coming. Like, oh, right, okay. Because I've wanted to write about male vet, mental health for a long time, especially, you know, um, get the right words to express how I felt about my cousin committing suicide. This wave came along, it's like, okay, here it is. Cancel everything. I'm on this wave. Let's go. Let's ride it. Scribble, 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 scribble. The stuff at the end, like, so, and then you have stuff and you just go like, uh, where, which part of the brain did that come from? Um, in fact, I will do one from that I haven't read, which is from that collection, and it is called uh, No Q Jumping. I wrote this. Because I said it's about uh, my uh, 
Protestant uh, suicide. And also, I, I read that um, the Pope, Trump Pope, used to be a nightclub bouncer. So, no, sorry, no to jumping. What did you go and do that for? A permanent solution to a temporary problem. I have very few rules. Be kind to others and no cue jumping. I don't want to see you before your mother, father, grand and grandpa. I don't want to see you knocking on the door, begging to come in. I said, I'll see you when I want to see you. There is a reason why the Pope used to be a nightclub bouncer. What are you going to do that for? You're going to have people wondering if there was something they could have done, anything they could have done different. You're giving me work to do now. Reincarnation ain't easy. I'm going to have to slice up the memory of you, distribute it to all the people who loved you, cared for you, prayed for you. And when I send you back in some obscure form, your family and friends recognize in the face of your unborn cousins. Remember these words. Feel free to shout them out anytime you feel bad. No cue jumping. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, God's talking. It's like, you know, because you, you're, you're not really, you're not, so, people aren't supposed to pass away before their parents, are they? And like, but the wave was coming, I had to write, and that's what came out. I hadn't, you know, if you say like, oh, write a, you know, write a collection about male mental health, couldn't do it. But, you know, that, that, that wave, and I don't know when the wave is coming. You know, just like or what it's going to be about, but you know the waves comes, I'm on it, ride it. And at the end, you've got a whole pile of stuff, and it's just like, right, okay, what is it? What is it about? Um, and that's how, uh, you know, quite a few of them, my last collections have been done. And sometimes it's just a case of like something will come into my head, and something like, okay, and I'll just write about that. I'm inspired by just a one-off thing. I'll write about that, stick it in a the folder. Then you've got a collection, you know, got a section of oh, all these poems about death, all these poems about relationships, all these poems are about then. Then you can go like, right, time to put a collection together. I haven't done one for a while. What have I got? Oh, I've got 80 poems. Right, okay. I've got some about death. You know, I've got some about life. I've got some about war. Is there any way of connecting them together? You know, is there a case of like, okay, is there some joy? Is there, is there subject matter that then encapsulates the whole thing? It might be then a case of like, I've got a narrative, you might just do some linking poems. So, but yeah, it, it, it is a case of um, um, the wave. Um, but what I'm doing now, it, it's a, uh, the wave is coming, um, and I know it's coming. And I know, and I know when it's going to end, as well, because I'm writing about when I, I was uh, a teenager in this town with like you know ten thousand people and only two people, two families that look like me, and I know when it's going to end because it's going to end on my friend's birthday, tenth of July, and we all, there's all, there was always exams around his birthday, so I know that we've come in, and I'm pretty sure tenth of July. But it'll end. It'll be his birthday. And we're like, yeah. So what I had, whatever I had in that time, from well, you know, now till end of July will be the next collection. So now yeah, I'll probably come back and go like, hey, what do you think of this? That would be great. Oh. I think we probably need to draw to an end to more people waiting at home for me to. Thank you. Well, well, I hope that was all right for you. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to hear you and and being really generous with time and so on. Um, did I, did I, did I, did I, yeah. Do you want to? I think there's one I missed out. I think there was one you missed out. Do you want to do, do it for us? Right, which one is it? Finish? It's sunshine by any means Ooh. necessary. Ooh. Now, the reason why I'm going <laughs> is because that one is about my friend, 
who was from that particular that town I, I was in, and she had pancreatic cancer. And she had six months to live. And so I wrote that about her. And in fact, I then went on to write um, another uh, collection inspired by her called Last Song in the Universe, which is all about um, coping with terminal illness. Um, right, I'm trying to find it then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. I am too much, she says. I laugh too loud. Care as if I've always been there. Leave a little for others to do. Those who signed up early, I yell, I am risk averse. Spirits curse me down. Be terse with your actions and language. How could you forget? I once knew someone who died of a broken heart. I'll give you the truth. In my dreams, I stand guard. Malcolm X style, no guns. Curtains closed, just pose. Like I can make a difference. Like I am enough. Like I've got a one-way connection with God. Even though I don't believe. I curse his name for giving me gifts I can't use. Time, I have it. She hasn't. She's done nothing wrong. And I've taken risks that my rights shouldn't have paid off. God, if you're listening, you know I once knew someone who died of a broken heart. So if that is possible, then my oldest friend can live longer, even beat an incurable disease by being blasted with positive words, deeds, actions. No more flowers, she chuckles. Geraniums, roses, once time to open when the others fade. She has forgotten the hay fever of our youth. No more, she laughs. I bombard by any means necessary because I don't do reads. Nobody goes out with a fight, without a fight on my watch. My eyes are running in winter. Our summer times will be forever. I cry too much. So yeah, she's, uh, I can say, you know, there's another thing you say about like, you don't know the effect of your word. So like she had six months to live, she wanted to make it to her daughter's graduation, which was two years away. And she was short by like a month. You know, so like I say, um, you don't know the power of your words. You don't know when. So I'm, so for her, um, I wrote that poem about her. And also the thing about that poem, it is 95% true because there's two extremes there. There's this person I'm writing about who got an incurable disease and wants to, you know, can she beat it? Can she live longer? She beat it for a time because she was only supposed to have like, you know, less than six months. She lasted nearly two years. On the other hand, there's a person in the, sto in the story who like died of a broken heart. And it's true. I, my wife had a friend who I, who I, as I knew her as well. And she died of a broken heart. She was seeing a guy and they broke up and she just faded and you know cause of death literally there was nothing you know she wasn't had another cold or like no disease or anything she just literally died of a broken heart the guy weren't that great i know the guy you know not that much these days but he wasn't he was nothing special i mean um so those are the two extremes there um um and this is about the power of words, right? And now I've, I've always, I was always supposed to be a writer because when I was at, um, because I've always kept a diary. For years and years, I kept a diary and I was going like, I don't know why I'm doing this. You know, you just sometimes just do things go natural, naturally just go your, your intuition. So I kept, a I kept a diary. So when I found out, when my friend got back in touch with me after years and years and years, and she's going like, oh, yeah, you know, I haven't been very well. Um, I compiled my diaries from like when I knew her, right? And I compiled it all together and I sent it to her. 
right? And it was one of the things that kept her going because it made her laugh because it reminded her about all the fun times that we had, you know. So like Anna Day did, Anna, 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 Day, Anna you know, whatever. I added bits to it, like you know, so like you know, but looking at it from like now, it's like oh yeah, we were sixteen then and seventeen then. Oh, what an ass I was, <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. And you know, those words, you know, her husband said that. Um, she's normally a chatterbox, right? But when she was reading that book, the, the, like the uh, the diary I sent her, said like she didn't say he, she was quiet. And he thought there was something wrong, and then he just hear the occasional like hysterical laughter. So you know, that's the power of words. That's the power of words. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we could stay on that. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you.